Righto. Section two, we're going to talk about posts. You got options. You got steel posts, you got wooden posts, you got concrete posts. Concrete and wood, unless you're in sand, you might poke a, a push a, a wooden post in the ground nicely, but you still need a machine or a couple of really strong blokes with a big hammer. For both concrete and wood in normal, normal going, we need um, to drill a hole, cut the post in, drill a hole, and then um, the only reason we would definitely go for wood or concrete is in deep sand that's loose and it can pull up and down. Because the other option, the cheapest option, I believe the longest lasting and best option is a steel post. Now we just look, look across here, it's one of the older, that's an older steel post. I'm going to do a demo on that later, but new options around, a lot of the manufacturers make gel. But once again, I'm going to push the uh, Waratah product. They've got a new, new, um, they've got a new post out, a new post configuration. It's a new, new type of steel. It's supposed to be stronger, more flexible, and the ability to, to push it over and stand it up. Now, what, what we say about uh, having cows looking for a bit more strength? They also make what they call a maxi post, and they are a lot stronger. Now, they're more than twice the price. But they're the same, virtually the same price to put in. What I work on with concrete and wood, to be realistic about times, the cost of your wooden post is about what it costs to put in. The cost of your steel post is about half the cost of the, of the steel post or less. Um, and with concrete, square peg, round hole, a little bit more difficult on the machine, um, you're looking at at least the cost of the, of the concrete post and sometimes up to double. So just as a general rule of thumb. Now, I'm just going to show you a really nice feature. We'll double up on this when we get to the wire section. But often what we do is we put a post there, we put a piece of wire, which I haven't prepared earlier, through there and wrap it around. It's quite, quite, quite time consuming. So what I'll just show you is to give you a demonstration, if we walk the fence, looking to reduce erection costs, but give you a better product. I'll say right now that also, no I won't, I'll go back, I'll, I'll walk up to the fence as if I'm tying this fence. All I do is I've got to get four, four what we call GIO clips, and they're a bit painful because they end up being a barrel of monkeys, and sometimes hard to untangle. But you do deal with it, you get better at it. So we walk up, we want to put the, um, Barb wire, get one of our monkeys out, another one on the top, quite simple, now that looks easy but I'm a little bit practiced at it, another one, and down on one knee for the last one, we'll put it at the bottom, just like that, now we're on to the next post, that was pretty quick, you can time that and work out how much money I'm trying to make out of my work. If you're, tying, if you're supplying ties, you've got to cut them and, and, and you've got to carry them. I will say also another nice thing about these is if a tree falls in fire grounds, if a tree falls on these, these clips let go at the last minute. If the post gets bent, we can move the post, take the clips off, strain the fence up, and go again. It's a quick fix. It's a, it's a really nice job to be able to main one, maintain one of these, these fences. Whoops. It's that simple. Also, having, having movement there allows for the fence to contract and expand and movement. The last thing you want is your wire to expand and contract and drag your post along. So, righto. What we might do next is a demonstration of how we put these posts in. And uh, we're trying to give you a, a bit of a controlled experiment as far as the strength of these new posts. So these could test my strength out. Righto, just bear with me. Everyone put their, their earmuffs on.
Okay. Now this could be a little bit unfair, but you can do it yourself if you can afford afford it. This is a good quality post, but it is a second hand post. I haven't got any others here at the moment because basically I don't use them. Because I'm convinced. But we're going to put a bit of stress test on them and see how long they last if they do get bent over. Oh, there you go. I'm going to break the leg in the post. So that's broken up just beneath the ground level. And we will actually get that one right out of the way so we don't fall on it. Remember where that is. Now this is a this is actually a Waratah post. This is one of their older posts called the Gelstar. It's not of the new material. I expect that I might have a little bit of trouble. I hope I have a little bit of trouble breaking it. it might be like a wrestler coming off that uh, barbed wire fence too if I let it go in the wrong place. So. There, I think. There, so it's broken up and down about two and a half times. That's a mess. Actually, I don't think I can do this one. I can't break that, I can't even bend it. The claim is that they will touch the ground three or four times. You stand them up even more, the ball goes through them, you'll stand them up. They might look so pretty, but they will stand up and still have the strength. What I'm going to do is throw this other smaller Waratah gel post in and we'll break that because I think that's a fair indication. I must say at this stage, one cool frosty morning, one of us ran over one of those maxi posts with the trailer and it did snap off. It was cool. I don't understand, but it um, took a fair bit of force. So here we go again, just to uh, prove to you how strong I am. I'll try and break another post. It cost me a fortune. Because cows, when they knock them over, they stand them up again. Well, that's broken. Right, if you're feeling strong, you're going to take one of these out. The, <laughs> the claim, claim is. You can bend them to the ground and back. I don't think I'll be able to bend them to the ground. <laughs> in fact, I'll tell you, you might go sideways. I've actually had them going a little bit crooked, so we have to straighten them up. My son and I, he's a big boy. We get on a wee battle to straighten them up. Hang on, I'll get it. I'll wait. So that's going side. That's going sideways. There's no way you're going to move that. Side. The best thing about them is if they do get damaged or do get broken, which I can't see it happening, is um, they're easily replaced. You don't have to dig a concrete one out. Once a concrete one goes over, it takes the whole fence out. The wooden one's been stapled in. This is with clips. A really nice thing about this is if we hit rock, we move the post 6 inches, 12 inches out of the way until we find some clear ground can keep hammering them, they do go in, they are very, very, very robust posts that will push in. 